What's going on everybody? This is episode three of our C++ series. This video, we're gonna talk about some more vocabulary for some of the stuff we've written and just review what we got, make sure we understand it all and talk about some potential problems. Now this series was sponsored by Embarcadero C++ Builder, which is the editor or the IDE I'm using for this series. They have a completely free community edition. You can follow along exactly with the series. I'll leave a link down below. So let's review some of the terminology that we've used so far. The very first thing is we have a using. We talked about the includes in a little bit more detail in the previous episode, so we'll start here. Using makes it easier for us to type code, but can cause problems later on when you have a more complex application and you have things with the same name. For example, C out right now is coming from the standard namespace, but what if there was another C out from a different namespace? How would C++ know which one we're talking about if we don't prefix it with standard like so? That is the issue that I am talking about. So some people will just not use using namespace standard and just prefix everything, but for the very basic code we have now, it's not a big deal. We could always go back and change our code as needed. The next thing I wanted to talk about are functions. So this int main parentheses, this is defining a function. And the name of the function, the identifier of the function is main. The term identifier refers to whatever we're naming something. So we're naming this function main. The identifier for our variable is name. And if we built any more custom stuff, we would probably have to give it an identifier. The main function is required and it is the start of our code. Later on, we will create more functions. For now, this is all we need. We will always have these parentheses defined after the function, which we will learn about what those are used for later on. But basically, it's where we can define parameters. Each function is going to have a return type or void if there is no return. So what does that mean? Well, right now you can see this is int. And what that means is when the function is done, it's going to return some data that is of type int. Zero is an integer, and that is of type int. You can think of ints as whole numbers, but positive or negative. So negative one, negative five, five, 20, zero. Those are all examples of integers. Now a variable, this allows us to store some information. We will define its type here. So this is a string variable, and it will always be a string. Now we talked about new lines with this special backslash n here. That's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it, which I didn't show, is let's say we just want to end the line here, you can say E-N-D-L. That is another way, and you don't need quotes. However, if you wanted to keep that period, you would have to do that separate, so it would look like this. So oftentimes when I'm working with strings and I want to end there, I'll just put a new line, and if I'm working with variables, I'll just use end L because it's a little bit easier. Either one's fine, it's no big deal. Now we can execute this code multiple times and every time we run it, it's going to restart from the beginning. So it'll compile the first time and that takes some time. If we went and ran it again, it's going to be much faster. It doesn't have to compile again because we didn't change any of our code. Now we can run this, we can say Caleb and it says your name is Caleb. I can run it again, it starts from the complete beginning and I can give it a different name and it says my name is John. So every time we run our code, it's like starting from the complete beginning. It has no memory or no concept of what we did in the past. If we wanted to write software that has some memory of, you know, what was our name the last time we ran this application or something like that, then we need to store that information in some file. Often this is going to be a text file or a database. So we will learn a little bit about reading and writing to files in this series. This is going to allow our application to have a memory if we wanted to say create a shopping list application or whatever it may be, you can do that, but that's going to require writing to a separate file. The last thing on here is this system pause. This is a hack to basically get the terminal to stay open. And you're probably not going to use that in a production application because at this point the application is done and it can just close itself. So for example, if you, ha if you created some custom menu and it said, do you want to quit? You type yes. You don't need the code to then say, type any key to continue you can just have it shut at that point. So this is going to be here for our example, 
but we don't really need it in a production application. So now that we have a bit more of that background behind us, I wanna talk about this using in more detail to at least show an example where it might be a problem. First, let's show what it would look like if we did not say using namespace STD. We would have to prefix certain things with STD. Not everything though. If you try to run this and you don't have correct code, it's going to give you some errors and these will pop up in a window. And it doesn't know what this string is because we didn't prefix it. So we'll have to say standard, same thing for C in. So the question is, what do you have to prefix? Well, anything defined inside of the standard namespace, which includes C out, string, C in, and end line. So we would say standard, oops, not in capitals. That's another important note. The capitalization does matter. So let's go ahead and try this. We don't get any errors and it works the same way. The benefit of prefixing everything with STD is it prevents naming conflicts. Let's say instead of calling this name, we called it something else like C out. Obviously that's a bad naming choice because we know that already exists here, but technically this could work. So instead of putting this in the name variable, we will put it in the C out variable and we will change it here as well when we display it. This works because C++ can tell that this C out is different than this C out. So when we run this code, you can see it works just the same way. If we instead had using namespace STD, well, then we would remove all of these and this is going to be a problem. So obviously we have a problem here and you can hover over it to see what that problem is or when you run it, you're going to get that error. You're gonna see there's a ton of errors that showed up. We can bring those messages up and you can pin this if you wish. And it's complaining that we have some bad use of operands. So obviously this is just not going to work. So let's go ahead and undo that. We can just say control Z and that'll start undoing our actions. So obviously be careful what you name your variables. I'd say it's totally fine to use using namespace STD as you are learning because you know if we have a naming conflict, we can just go change our code real quick. The problem is if you have a code base that's you know millions of lines or whatever it might be, it's not easy to go and change everything. So with smaller applications, no big deal. I wouldn't worry about it. I know I'm gonna get comments saying, oh, you're dumb, you're doing it wrong, either way. So I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm probably going to keep using namespace STD to make writing code simpler. That way we don't have to worry about prefixing everything all the time. We can just focus on whatever we are learning at the time. There is another option I wanted to show you guys, and that is you can say using namespace STD, but only for certain things. So we can say using namespace STD, colon colon c out and actually when you do this you're going to remove the keyword namespace we're not importing an entire namespace we are just importing one thing from that namespace now whenever we say c out it's going to assume it's coming from std namespace but for c in we're going to have to keep it so let's go ahead and change this back to name sorry i didn't undo all of the way so my changes aren't here yet so let's go ahead and fix that. And in this situation, we're going to have to prefix everything else with STD. So that should be working code at this point. And obviously in this situation, I think you can just keep standard if you accidentally had that or you typed it out, that's no big deal. You can still prefix if you've already said using, but there's no need to. But just to show you that that works, we can compile this. That works just fine. And we can also just remove that. So just to, you know, try different things. So let's run this, make sure it works. What is your name? John, and it says your name is John. Perfect. The next video, we're already going to start talking about branching in our software. So basically how do you do different things depending on something? This is often called control flow. This is done with an if statement, and that's what we're gonna be talking about in the next video. Definitely be sure to subscribe and stay tuned. I'll see you then.